What's up biology students, Mr. Holloway here. In today's video we're going to talk about cells, specifically what's inside a cell that allows it to perform all of the basic functions of life. In particular, we're going to focus on what we call the endomembrane system, the membranes inside a cell that form important structures necessary to help that cell perform its function. There is also a really important membrane that surrounds every cell, and we're going to talk about that a bit today as well. In our previous video, we talked about some of the basic cell types, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Here we see those examples again. As you may recall, there are some pretty significant differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In particular, you might notice that these eukaryotic cells have all kinds of stuff inside of them, whereas the prokaryotic cell has very little by comparison. These structures we see inside the eukaryotic cells are called organelles, which means little organs. Kind of like our bodies contain organs that do specific jobs, a stomach to digest food and a heart to pump blood and whatnot, eukaryotic cells have small substructures inside of them that do specific jobs to keep that cell alive and functioning. One of the defining characteristics that separates prokaryotic from eukaryotic organisms is that eukaryotic cells contain membrane-bound organelles while prokaryotic cells do not. These membrane-bound organelles are part of the complex system of internal membranes that allow eukaryotic cells to do more and to carry out more specialized functions than prokaryotic cells. Keep in mind, our cells are not filled with tiny people running around and doing chores like this picture might suggest. But what this figure does tell us is that the membrane-bound organelles that exist inside a cell are all working together to help that cell perform its basic life functions. Before we start talking about the specific functions of all of these different membrane-bound organelles, let's talk a bit about the membrane that surrounds each cell. This membrane is composed of a double layer of lipids called a lipid bilayer. And because lipids do not mix with water, this lipid bilayer effectively acts as a boundary between the inside and the outside of the cell. More than that, this lipid bilayer also helps to regulate what kind of materials can enter and exit the cell. These proteins that we see embedded in the cell membrane play a big role in that process. Whether we're talking about prokaryotes or eukaryotes, all cells have a cell membrane made of a lipid bilayer. Plant cells also have a cell wall around the outside of the cell membrane. This cell wall is made of a carbohydrate called cellulose, and it provides additional protection, but also extra strength and rigidity. Plants don't have skeletons, after all, so this cell wall helps to support the weight of a plant against the force of gravity. Bacteria also have cell walls, but this bacterial cell wall is made of a different material and is structurally very different than the cell wall around a plant cell. Unlike prokaryotic organisms like bacteria, eukaryotic cells contain a nucleus that houses and protects the cell's genetic material. That's the stuff labeled chromatin in this figure, and chromatin is a mix of DNA and proteins. In the center of the nucleus is a dense region called the nucleolus, and this is where other important nucleic acids called RNA is synthesized. Like the cell itself, the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane of its own called the nuclear envelope. This nuclear envelope is full of holes called pores, and RNA is able to exit the nucleus through these pores. DNA, however, resides only in the nucleus, and is only ever free-floating during cell division. Here, we see some real-life nuclei from some real-life cells. This micrograph was taken with an electron microscope, and we can see the close-up details of the nucleus and nucleolus. This micrograph was taken with a regular compound light microscope, much like the ones we have in class. We can tell that these are plant cells because of the thick cell wall, and we can see the nucleus of a cell, but we can't see much else at this magnification. Surrounding the nucleus is a complex system of membranes that we call the endoplasmic reticulum. These little bundles that we see here are called ribosomes, and ribosomes are made of RNA that has been tightly coiled and folded. Ribosomes stick to parts of the endoplasmic reticulum, giving this internal membrane a studded appearance, which is why we call it the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or rough ER. Ribosomes manufacture polypeptides, the beginning of a protein molecule, and they do this job inside the endoplasmic reticulum. Once these polypeptides have been manufactured, they are packaged into small membrane-bound structures called vesicles, in which they can be shipped across the cell to another complex system of membranes called the Golgi apparatus. 
Polypeptides are further modified in the Golgi, and once a finished protein has been constructed, the Golgi packages these proteins into another vesicle and ships them where they need to go, either somewhere in the cell or possibly out of the cell to some other place in the body. Here we see some electron micrographs of the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. In this image of the ER, which has been colorized by the way, we can see not only the highly folded membrane that makes up the ER in green, but we can also see the ribosomes that give the ER its rough appearance in red. The combination of the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi make up a big part of the endomembrane system within the eukaryotic cell. And you should observe that both the ER and the Golgi are made of membranes that are highly folded. And this folding provides a ton of space for these organelles to do their job. Just look at how many ribosomes we can pack into this ER. If each of these ribosomes is busy manufacturing a protein, that's an awful lot of molecules being constructed. Other membrane-bound organelles are responsible for transforming energy from one form into another in order to power the cell. In plant cells, an organelle called the chloroplast is responsible for conducting photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is an energy-absorbing or endothermic reaction in which energy from the sun is transformed into chemical energy that is stored as food, specifically as carbohydrates like glucose. And this is how carbon enters the food chain. This process also produces breathable oxygen gas. Both plant and animal cells also contain mitochondria, and mitochondria are responsible for transforming the energy stored in carbohydrates like glucose into energy that the cell can use. This happens because of an energy-releasing or exothermic reaction called cellular respiration. So, plants are responsible for gathering energy from the sun and for manufacturing food molecules filled with that energy using photosynthesis, and this occurs in the chloroplast. In both plant and animals, the energy is released from food molecules by cellular respiration, which occurs in the mitochondria. These energy transformations are vital to supporting life on our planet. Chloroplasts and mitochondria are not only surrounded by their own membranes, but also contain highly folded inner membranes as well. In the chloroplast pictured here in this electron micrograph, we can see these membranes kind of resemble a stack of coins. It is these stacks where photosynthesis occurs. In this electron micrograph of a mitochondrion, we can see the folded inner membranes where cellular respiration takes place. It actually resembles the folds of the endoplasmic reticulum quite a bit. And just like the ER, these folds provide a lot more space for this important organelle to do its job. There are many other structures inside a cell as well. In plant cells, starches are stored in this large central vacuole. And as you can see, this vacuole takes up a huge amount of space inside the cell. Basically, this vacuole is a storage area for all the food manufactured by that plant during photosynthesis. Cells also contain these small structures called lysosomes. Lysosomes are the cell's recyclers. They help to break down old and worn out parts and the cell can use these parts to rebuild new molecules and structures. Lysosomes are like little packages of enzymes surrounded by a thin membrane. And these burst open, releasing enzymes which break down and help to recycle old cellular machinery. In this figure, which is a computer generated graphic, we can see elements of what is called the cytoskeleton long protein filaments that provide internal structure and support the cell. These filaments may also play a role in the movement of materials inside the cell. And in this image, we can see a vesicle produced by the Golgi being dragged along a filament of the cytoskeleton. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in living organisms, but even cells are made of smaller parts. And all these smaller parts work together to help the cell perform the basic functions of life, like transforming energy and metabolizing molecules. These smaller parts, called organelles, are part of a complex system of internal membranes called the endomembrane system, which is every bit as important as the membrane that surrounds and protects the cell. And with that, I will bring our video to a close. Thanks for watching, and remember, you can go back and watch this video as many times as you need until you feel like you understand what the various parts and pieces that make up a cell are all about.